You're listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, the place to learn about new technology and technological advances before they become mainstream. This episode is sponsored by Ingram Micro Security. Strengthen your security practice. Let's get into it. Welcome to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. I'm your host, Kerry Roberts, and my guests today are Colin Rowan, a Senior Solutions Sales Specialist with Ingram Micro, Tom Mann, a Senior DXS Engineer with Ingram Micro, and Kevin Switzer, a Technology Consultant with Ingram Micro. Welcome back, Colin, Tom, and Kevin. You were all here on episode 67, and we are grateful to have you back with us again. So thanks for being here. Hey, Kerry. Thanks for having us. So email is still the number one threat factor in security. And there's this one stat that states that by 2021, 50% of businesses will be using Office 365. Why is it important to protect our inboxes from threats? And can you share with us some other stats on mailbox security? Yeah, Kerry, this is uh, Kevin. Let me uh, answer this one. And I wanna start out by saying that, uh, of course, when we deal with any type of security, we have to focus on what the attacking groups uh, are focusing on. So right now we are seeing that attacking groups uh, have shifted their focus, especially recently since the start of the pandemic. Typically they are are very focused on attacking hospitals and other healthcare providers with ransomware. That's where they seem to have their their biggest money makers. However, we've seen a shift away from that, which is uh, partly out of uh, compassion since the pandemic and also partially out of fear because they know if they were to overtake a hospital and, and, and see such bad things happen, uh, law enforcement would actually uh, take a good interest in them. So they are taking um, a switch away from that and now are much more focused on remote workers. And on top of that, people are very hungry for information pertaining to COVID and other things we are seeing going on in the news right now. So people are much more uh, likely to click on an on a email that has a news topic that, that interests them. And due to these factors, we've seen um, since March, there's been about a 600% increase in phishing attacks. And the majority of these attacks are with the purpose of gaining an individual's credentials. That's what the attackers really want to get their hands on. So they can access the network themselves. And this is how pretty much all the major breaches start. And also, Even hopefully soon this pandemic comes to an end, but even after that, we don't see any slowing down of people switching to different cloud applications, including Office 365. So this is a focus that needs to uh, remain in place going forward. Yeah, and I think along those lines, what's interesting is the adoption rate of Google and Microsoft to their cloud office systems is, of course, growing rapidly. How do you think this is forcing security and risk management leaders to evaluate every product in their email security portfolio? Right. So we're going to have a lot more companies, a lot more users uh, using these types of uh, cloud email solutions. And the problem is email threats have become much more sophisticated lately, and they continue to do so at a rapid pace. And the security provided by the cloud email services, they typically rely on a standard antivirus and new all reputation uh, filtering security measures. And this is simply just no, no longer enough. The security managers for any organization, they need to revisit their email security strategies and build them for the current types of email threats. And those uh, top threats right now that we're seeing are sophisticated types of email, links to exploit kits, business email compromise, and right now the top one is credential phishing. And I've been reading various security reports for a long time, and I'd say for the last three years or so, any report you read, states that 85 to 95 of any major um, exploit starts with a phishing email, getting somebody to click. So email security is something that really does need to be a focus of security managers, and it needs to be a layered approach, and it needs to be innovative. Now, I'm curious because I don't think we've talked a lot about this on this show just yet, but some people do email, of course, on their desktop or on their mobile device. How do they differ, especially when it comes to the level of security threat, or or do they? Okay, so, yeah, I want to break this down uh, kind of into um, three answers. Um, Number one is that most mobile device users are going to be um, a VIP and or some type of uh, power user. So, Typically, it's somebody who needs to have access to their their email, you know, around the clock, no matter where they are. 
They usually have a higher level of access on the network than a desktop user, for example. And number two, it depends on the level of security that actually is configured. And the way this is done, it's called a mobile device manager solution. So this would be something managed by the company's security department, and they're going to at least be able to force certain security policies um, on the mobile device. It's gonna do, you can do checks for, are you actually using a VPN? Are you using DNS security? I do believe those are actually a bit less likely to be done on a mobile device versus on a desktop or a laptop. You can also enforce things like, uh, is the antivirus, anti-malware application on that mobile device uh, up to date and things like that. Um, and then also keep in mind, if you're on a mobile device, uh, you really can be anywhere. You're not likely working from your home office. So even if you do have a secure router at home, obviously you should have one in the office, but if you're not in either one of those places, there is not gonna be that additional layer of security of working through some type of firewall or secure router. And the number three answer to this, and, and quite possibly what I think is most relevant, is what we refer to as level of distraction. So while you're working on or at a laptop or a desktop, you're either in the office, you're at your remote home office, and you're typically focused in on the screen, you're paying attention. Also, you have a bigger screen than you would on your mobile device and, and being able to see everything. Typically in that scenario, you are focused on your work, but if you're on a mobile device, it's a higher likelihood that you are in a place that is distracting, whether you're out for a walk down the street and you wanna read an email, check something real fast, you're likely not really focused in on what's going on in that email. Also, if you happen to be at a kid's sporting event and there's all kinds of things going on, people you're talking to, you're more likely to get an email that could actually have some red flags in it as a security risk, but um, since you're distracted, there's a good chance you may miss that and click on the link anyway. No, I think those are really good things to differentiate for people to understand if they weren't clear before. Now, Cisco has a new solution called the Cisco Cloud Mailbox Defense. Is this replacing a product they already have, or rather, are they going after a new market segment? Yeah, this is Tom. I'll take this one. Uh, so this is definitely a new solution. Basically, this solution is meant to add to an existing solution already in Office 365. So Office 365 has some protection by Microsoft. Many people want additional security beyond that, and that's exactly what this solution does. It also qualifies for the new Gartner category of Cloud Email Security Supplement or a CESS, that's another one of those Gartner categories, with the idea that more companies might be providing this type of thing in the future. The idea of this also is it's geared for the SMB first, but can scale up you know, a little bit higher. So it's extremely easy to set up, and I'm not exaggerating, it's really easy to set up, very simple to manage, and starts at only 25 seats and up. You know, so, Basically, it allows you to buy it. It's even easy to buy. Uh, one SKU allows you to buy the product, and it just comes in one or three or five years as a cloud subscription. And for those that already have CES, are there differentiators from it? Is it something that they could consider getting instead or in place of? Yeah, so cloud email security, what you were just talking about is their existing solution that's been out for a while. You could actually get CMD with CES, although many of the SMBs probably would not have CES. CES you know, is 100 users or higher, and it's a more complicated product. So it's, frankly, it's, CES is not really easy to set up. It takes a little bit of time to set up and configuration. The advantages of CES, though, is it's very extensive in its capability. It does antivirus, anti-malware, gray mail, data loss prevention, email encryption, so lots of capability in CES. However, it doesn't really scale down to the SMB, really small SMBs especially, so 100 users and below. 
What's nice about CMD, Cloud Mailbox Defense, the new solution, is it integrates into Office 365 natively, and you can set it up in five minutes. It really can be set up that quickly. Where cloud email security, which we were just talking about, it's a gateway solution. So all the email that's coming and going is sent out, say, from Office 365, in this example, to a gateway, it scans it and then forwards it on. Anything incoming goes to that gateway first. Cloud Mailbox Defense doesn't work that way. If you're using Office 365, the mail just goes into Office 365 and is copied over to Cloud Mailbox Defense. It scans it usually in less than a second and can determine if an email is bad. If it's bad, it makes an API call to Office 365 to either trash or junk that particular email. So it's very low impact on what's going on and you don't have to change the direction of your mail or anything. The other big difference that I wanna emphasize this point is it scans internal email, inbound and outbound email where a gateway-based solution only could do inbound and outbound, meaning any mail within your company or within Office 365 between all the customers in there, which is 50% of all email, isn't gonna be scanned by a gateway-based solution. So you're really gonna see more companies try to integrate in with these solutions. And that's exactly the way this works. And the UX design and setup of this is really nice too. It's got a really clean look and it has three simple policy options as well. Can you talk a little bit more about this? Yeah, those policy options, basically it's the configuration screen. It's a single screen that all fits on your monitor so you don't even have to scroll to configure it. And basically you decide when you want emails to be scanned, meaning you select inbound, outbound or internal or any combination of those, maybe all three. And you also say, do you want to do that for attachments and for the messages? That's most of it, right? Most of the configuration right there. Then you determine what you want to do. So there's a simple policy that if it's phishing, do one thing. If it's malware, do another. So you just say if you want them to go to junk or trash, and then you pick what domain names you want to do it for. So basically you're the uh, do internet domain name that you're receiving email under. You say, yeah, I want to scan that domain name. And that's it. It takes less than a minute to fill out that screen to get that going. Well, SMBs are always looking for things that are easy, and it's really nice to hear that this is a great solution for that. Now, all of you, as we said earlier, were on the show a little while ago, and so we want to adjust our main question we ask here, which is when you think of technology as a whole when it comes to email security, where do you see it going within the next year? And Colin, I'll start with you on this one. Yeah, specifically from my standpoint, I really think we're going to see customers use a lot more Cisco solutions, such as not only the ones we talked about today, but even like Cisco Umbrella, just because we see a lot more companies that are working remotely that they might not be still up to speed or completely set up for working remotely. And we see a lot of people trying to hack through their email and send them links, um, which is something that Cisco Umbrella would protect them against. So I really see uptick in those type solutions happening throughout the next year or so. Tom, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm going to just go more specific to this solution with that and actually talk about kind of the roadmap a little bit. You know, so this solution, Cloud Mailbox Defense, came out you know, last week, basically, and that's their initial GA launch. But they're going to be doing updates continuously every week, every two weeks. And they're looking at some major updates just this year. So SecureX is something that came out early in the year. And that's a big management platform from Cisco. So they're going to look to have SecureX integration this year. There'll be a lot of small improvements to uh, reporting improvements on uh, various areas of the interface, searching improvements. But a little farther out on the roadmap, and this is a kind of a big thing, would be uh, G Suite support. So that's farther out on the roadmap. I don't know when that's coming, but that's, that's on the way too eventually. Yeah, no, that's great to hear that it doesn't matter which option you're using, there's going to be something to help you. Kevin, any final thoughts after hearing these two? Yeah, and I would say more to um, 
the big picture is that uh, it's pretty safe to say that hackers will continue to develop more sophisticated malware and they will get uh, continue to get more creative uh, with their phishing schemes. I really don't see that uh, that changing. So with that, I do see that solutions that are more efficient in threat hunting and even able to automate some email security tasks are going to become very key and very popular. And this is exactly what Cisco was doing with Cisco Talus, um, as well as SecureX. Now, if people want to learn more about anything we spoke about, they want to connect with any of you, or they want to get a free demo to test this out, where is the best place they can do that? So they can reach out to myself, Colin Ryan, directly. I'd be more than happy to set them up with either a free trial, or we can get an appointment through our BTC with Tom Mann and Kevin Switzer. So definitely reach out to myself today, and we can get that up and running for you guys. Perfect. And we will link that information in the show notes as well. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming back and sharing your knowledge with us today. Thank you, Carrie. If you like this episode or have a question, join the discussion on Twitter at Ingram Tech Soul with the hashtag B2B Tech Talk. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. You've been listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, hosted by Carrie Roberts. This episode was sponsored by Ingram Micro Security. B2B Tech Talk is a joint production by Sweetfish Media and Ingram Micro. Ingram Micro production handled by Laura Burton and Christine Fan. To not miss an episode, subscribe today in your favorite podcast platform.